Hey guys, welcome back to Makeaway Life Coaching. My name is Sarah and I'm the Life Coach here. I wanted to boundary work Wednesday. I love, I love boundary work Wednesday. So thanks for joining. Make sure you subscribe below so that you never miss a boundary work Wednesday because we're here for a couple minutes every week to change your life. Boundaries are freedom. Okay, last week we were talking about Sweet Sherry. Get this book, Boundaries by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. And we were given an example from Sherry from their books. Sherry's a really sweet Christian lady, but she needs some boundaries in her life, which is why she's the star of the book. <laughs> anyway, last, make sure you go back and watch last Wednesday's video. We went all into what Sherry, her dynamic with her mom. Um, to sum it up very quickly, her mother wanted to visit and Sherry wanted to, needed to work on her daughter's costume because she has limited time to do so. Her mother went into this mega martyr guilt trip and Sherry dropped her boundary and said, okay, no problem. I'll just visit with you and not do the costume. And then, ooh, had a lot of resentments about it. Okay, so I asked you guys to leave comments or email me and thank you so much for doing so. Let's go ahead and just talk about a different way Sherry could have made a choice. And today, the concept I want to introduce is self-care versus self-abandonment. Um, I grew up hearing the word codependent, which I find really confusing. Like now I have a master's in counseling and I'm a, you know, certified life coach. I still don't really understand how the words codependent make sense. <laughs> so scratch that. In my life coaching, we call codependency self-abandonment. I learned that from um, my very wise professor in my master's in counseling, and it is life-changing terminology changes. So what Sherry did, she needed to work on the costume. She's a working mom. She's super busy. Her husband is not super busy helping her on the house. And so it's all on her. And she had a job to do. And she loves her mom. So her mom shows up and she wishes she could fit with, of course, she wants to visit with her mom and not have to work on this costume. That's what anybody would want to do. Costume, it's a terrible thing to have to work on. But she had this obligation. And so she tried to set the boundary. Mom, can I work on it while we're talking? And her mom was like, oh, Eeyore, Eeyore, you know, sorry for me. Which was the usual dance that they're always in. And instead of Sherry holding her boundary, which is a key part of boundaries, you set the boundary, you hold the boundary. She caved. Why did she cave? Because of her mother's feelings. The third part of setting boundaries is accepting the consequences. Okay. Most of the time we set boundaries, people have feelings about it. So it in this case, Sherry's mom felt abandoned and martyred and, you know, tried to guilt Sherry into changing, which worked. Um, another example is if somebody asks you to, you know, run the class party tomorrow, <laughs> for your eight year old son. And you're like, gosh, I just can't do that. And then th that person goes like, well, I mean, do you think I should be able to do it? And it's like guilt trip, guilt trip, guilt trip. So this is how people respond to our boundaries. They often attempt to get us to change through anger or guilt or shame or who knows what. But it's our job to protect ourselves in life. Nobody's gonna do it for you, okay? If up until now you have been a welcome mat, and everyone's walked all over you, just realize that was your choice. And you may not have known better, but now that you're working here with your boundaries every Wednesday, you are going to learn better. And then it's on you to make different choices and you can do it because I did it. And it's so powerful, it will give you freedom. So here's what I wish, I'm just gonna tell you my opinion today. Here is maybe when the pandemic's over, I can interview people and have them sit here and we could be like, what would you do? But right now, you know, we can't talk to anyone close up because of germs. So I'm just gonna tell you what I would do. I'm gonna be Sherry. I would have said in my head, should I practice self-care and tell my mom I just cannot visit, although I wish I could because I have to do this and hold my boundary, or am I gonna self-abandon, which is another word for being codependent, and give up what I need in order to keep her happy because that seems selfless, but really we do that because we don't wanna deal with their negative feelings. It's actually not selfless. It's pretty, um, you know, selfish. 
I don't want to deal with your guilt and shame, so I'm just going to cave on myself. So if I were Sherry, I would have said, Mom, I love you and I love our visits, but I just can't do it right now. I have to get this costume done. Um, you know, I would, I'm would. i going to come visit you in a couple days. I don't have the exact date in my head right now because I don't even have time to think about it, but I'm really looking forward to it. Now, part of keeping your boundary is step three. Regard, you have to accept their feelings and not rescue them. So then let's say Sherry's mom is like, well, but I'm a widow and you never want to spend time with me. And I would say, gosh, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. That breaks my heart. I do want to visit with you. It's just not going to work right now. I love you. Thank you for stopping by. Goodbye. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean Sherry's mom isn't going to be a martyr. It just means Sherry is going to choose to take care of herself over the needs of her mother. Now, if you're watching this and you think, well, that is selfish, that could be something you believe, but it could be something you've been just taught that you don't really believe anymore. And I just want you to question as an adult listening to the, or watching this video, is it really what you believe? Or is it possible that taking care of ourselves while being kind to people is possible? The to do both is possible. Okay. So then let's say I hold the boundary. I set the boundary with my mom. Not my mom. Sherry's mom. I set the boundary. I hold the boundary. Sherry's mom leaves in a skulk. Just throwing shame. Throwing shame at me the whole time. Now I'm Sherry. I probably feel bad about that. But you know what? I would have felt bad abandoning myself and not working on the costume. So what's the diff? I still feel bad either way. And then I know in my head, you know what? Mom's love tank seems empty. We've been talking about the love languages. So let's say mom needs more quality time. I'm just going to file it away and be like this weekend, I'm going to find time to take the kids over and go out to lunch or do something special with grandma to try to, you know, heal her little heart. That's the best I can do. And then just accept it. Do your best to repair. Repair is important. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's easy, but just do your best to try to make mom feel loved. Okay, that's it. That's boundaries in a nutshell. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about Sherry and her interaction with a very good but difficult friend. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. And then come back this Friday. We're going to be talking about the Enneagram and how it's changed my life and how it could change your life too. Take care. Thank you for joining us. See you Friday. Bye-bye.